Forza Horizon is a superb video game from one of Microsoft's premier franchises, but you can't buy it anymore. Digital Rights Management, or DRM, is making certain games extinct. For every step forward the games industry takes, making it easier to play retro games, they take a step back. Xbox, to their credit, has done a round turn from their backwards compatibility is backwards thinking mantra of yesteryear, and they've prioritized making their consoles seamlessly play games across generations. For consoles whose games are too old for this treatment, certain titles get specially adapted to play on new hardware. It's a great system, and with digital storefronts supplementing physical game discs, it's never been easier to scoop up games that were once old, rare, or out of print. But digital games mean digital rights and licenses. Loads of games over the years have been delisted or relisted in edited form to digital storefronts due to licensing issues. Just recently, Spec Ops The Line made headlines for being yanked for this very reason. And Microsoft's flagship open-world driving series, Forza Horizon, has fallen prey to this too. I'll explain why in a bit. Forza Horizon is the first game in the open-world spin-off series of the mainline Forza Motorsport games. The Horizon series has been critically acclaimed from the start, and I had never played any of them until, well, when I wrote this it was 2022, so I can't say recently anymore. But anyway, coincidentally, I played it before my first ever trip to Colorado, which was the inspiration for this game's setting. I got it for free on Xbox Live before it got delisted from the marketplace. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm already excited to see how they improve in subsequent entries. Although, I understand this one holds a special place in the hearts of many series faithful, and I can see why. It's inspired. So many fun details scattered about like speed traps, discount signs to smash, roads to drive, and barns to find. The different bonuses and awards you can stack up by driving stylishly are nifty. But what is Forza Horizon's deal? Horizon is a racing, driving, car, music, festival thing. You play as a no-name entrant trying to prove yourself in the festival by becoming popular and winning enough races and showcases to qualify for increasingly more exclusive contests. The gameplay loop goes something like this. You'll drop into the world and pull up your map, look for a challenge, the GPS and driving line on the road will lead you there, you'll race, you'll earn credits, you'll buy new cars. Win enough events and you'll qualify for the next event tier, where the competition gets stiffer and the barrier to entry is higher. Each tier features a rival who shows up in each race to taunt you and beating a rival in a race earns you bonus credits. To advance to the next tier, you slug it out in a long street race, and if you win, you also keep their car. What's more, you'll find hidden cars, lookout points, outposts with challenges to complete, street race leagues to earn some cash off the books, and even challenge random drivers you meet on the road. Ultimately, an open world driving game has to give you things to do between races, or else it's just a level-based racing game with extra steps. So they did what I consider a great job of doing just that. Plus, there are tons of cars to collect, paint, and modify. But these cars, unfortunately, need to be licensed by the manufacturer to appear in the game. There is speculation that these licenses are possible culprits as to why Forza Horizon and some of its siblings no longer reside on Xbox's digital storefront. What I do know is, DRM needs to be shut down until we can find out what's going on! Not only did Playground Games give you tons to do, but it looks spectacular with every mile the odometer ticks up. The game world is gorgeous, yet it's not obnoxiously big. Trying to keep stuff a little intimate, for an open world driver anyway, which I appreciate. Size isn't everything, and Horizons Colorado is big enough to feel grand, but small enough to get to know. The fall foliage is stunning, and there are little touches that impressed me, such as the clouds drifting by if you sit and watch them, or the screen shake as a P-51 flies overhead. I played on Series X in 4K and Auto HDR, and it looks fantastic. I'm telling you, bananas. I can tell it's not a current gen game, but it does not look 12 years old. It's Xbox One X enhanced, meaning it runs at native 4K with a rock solid 30 FPS frame rate and blazing fast load times. Besides that, the Auto HDR is off the charts. The lighting looks great, but it's the expanded color palette that had my jaw on the floor. And on Series X, it loads so fast that I can't bask in the pretty pictures or read any of the text. That's all well and good, but how does it drive? It drives great! I'm pretty versed in the mainline motorsport entries, which are true simulation racers, so I felt pretty comfortable from the get-go, especially once I turned off most of the assists to toughen up the driving dynamics. The rewind from the motorsport series appears as well, with the usual trade-off of credit multiplier penalties. I ended up waffling between medium and hard difficulty depending on the race. I definitely skewed more medium as I got towards the end. I guess I got pretty challenging, but I sometimes kept the difficulty on hard and toggled some of the assists back on. The physics are definitely not simulation, and I appreciate it. Handling is more forgiving, 
and it allows you to do some goofy stuff and recover instead of punish you. And personally, I've always felt like some of the traction physics in the motorsport entries are unrealistically punishing, so in some ways this felt truer to life. I had been interested in trying the Horizon series for a long time, because I wanted to get the feel for what it would be like to drive these kinds of high-performance cars around regular roads. This game does a great job in parting that sensation to the player. The world begins to warp around you at high speeds on roads, where every flick of the steering wheel or nudge on the brake pedal is liable to crush your speed streak. And now we approach what is probably the DRM culprit. The music. I must note, I dig the music. Great selection teleporting me straight back to my senior year of high school. You get three radio stations you can listen to at will, and all three were pretty solid for my taste. By the time I was through, I did get sort of tired of some of the songs, which I think has more to do with how long I spent playing it than the breadth of the music catalog. They also have a prodigious amount of talk radio stuff recorded, all about the festival and what's been going on recently, which is yet another thing about this game I thought was wonderfully executed. They clearly put a lot of thought and effort into it, and it would be so easy to overlook it. The whole conceit of the festival is realized well, and setting it in Colorado fits perfectly. They fleshed out so much detail. The festival setting itself, the banners and barricades, the posters with bands performing, the outposts and events marked with colored smoke, the colored wristband on your avatar and cockpit view, spotlights sometimes marking your destination, the rivals at each level that you have to face off with, the radio stations constantly bantering about festival hijinks, the special events, Mustang vs. Mustang is a particularly memorable one. The crowds cheering you on, the popularity meter, nearly everything in the game reinforces the setting and central conceit. The game repeatedly points you back to what you are doing and why you're here, which in turn makes everything you do feel purposeful, and it makes the game feel coherent, like it knows what it's doing. The HUD interface gets a little crowded and overwhelming at times, but you get used to it and you get better at deciphering what flashes up and what you can disregard. You can tweak some of that too, but I never got to that point. I do have a screenshot bone to pick. There are two resolution options for saving screens, sub 1 megapixel and something like 8 or 9 megapixels. You can't save them in high res anymore since the servers are shut down. The low res is pretty blurry on the 4K TV. My solution was to screenshot the 4K photo mode preview in game with the system capture. But when you do this, you can't take down all the screenshot HUD elements. So either settle for low-res screens or high-res screens with HUD elements stuck on them. I may be the only player alive who cares about this. I will shout about Xbox Series X performing auto HDR to anyone who will listen to me, which is like a hundred of you tops. But the auto HDR is exceptional. In case you don't know what that is, basically Microsoft has trained AI to render old games in HDR based on what an HDR image ought to look like if the game was going to output one. Everyone thought AI was going to become sentient and wipe out humanity. But here we are reaping the benefits of AI on Xbox, and it's in the form of higher dynamic range and wide color gamut. The future rocks. If you don't have a Series X, you can still benefit from the enhanced treatment too. This game is near flawless looking 12 years later. Every once in a while, there's a bit of a hiccup with shadows or reflections, but the few things I noticed came and went in the blink of an eye. I tried to find footage of the kind of artifact I'm talking about, and I couldn't. And I don't know what blemishes were endemic to the original 360 version as opposed to what gremlins may have arisen when updating it and playing it on new hardware with auto HDR. Either way, it was uncommon and almost too quick to notice when it happened. Part of what I'm about to say could tip my hand that I'm incredibly behind on the cutting edge of gaming as a whole, and there have been four more Horizon titles made on progressively more powerful hardware. But I'd believe you if you told me that Horizon came out, eh, three years ago. It looks that good, and Horizon is just a joy to play. I absolutely love this game. So much to do and see, so many hidden places just waiting to be found, nothing there to reward you except the view and the feeling of discovery. Driving around and just exploring is its own reward, and their rendition of Colorado is breathtaking. There's more I could do, but I definitely gutted the majority of it. I left a few main events undone, along with more that I didn't take first place, but I'm okay with that. I did enough to beat the game, finished with a boatload of credits that I could go back to someday and buy more cars but not right now. Just too many games on the backlog. I enthusiastically recommend this game to anyone even remotely interested in open world games, driving games, or something outside their normal scene. The jury's probably out on exactly why it was delisted, but you can't buy this game digitally, nor is it on Game Pass. Most likely there were licensing issues with the music and or cars that, once expired, came with certain caveats like digital distribution. So your best bet now for playing this absolute gem is to find a used physical copy somewhere. And you should. 
Speaking of arcade-style 360 exclusives with outstanding visuals where you control high-performance machines, you might like this retrospective I did on Ace Combat 6. You like that segue? Click the link on the screen or hop over to my channel for other videos you might like. Keep it clean.